Hi there, welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 248. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. If you're watching live, as you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. And hello to those of you on replay. If you're watching replay, drop hashtag replay in the comments. And if you're new here, drop hashtag new so we can say hello to you. Let me say hi to a few of you as you're rolling in. Hello, Randy, Charlene, Mary, thumbs up, yay, yay. Hi, Angela, Snowy Mom, hello, Mommy Roo, Emma, welcome, welcome. Darlene, Kathy, yay, hi, Alicia, hi, Cindy, hi, Tessie, Christine from West Georgia. Welcome, I'm excited to see you guys tonight. I missed you last week. Thank you so much for giving me the week off. Um, Brian and I were super crazy busy getting product shares out. We got those shipped out a week ago Monday. I believe all of them have been delivered. There's one that says awaiting delivery scan, but that usually means they just were lazy and didn't scan it. So um, let me know if there were any issues with that, but I've heard some fantastic feedback from all of you. I hope you are loving the product shares. We also... We took last week off, oh, because me and the kids traveled up to Cleveland, Ohio last Thursday, and so it was just too frantic, What needed a break, you know how that goes. We had a really good time. Brian stayed home with the doggies because we weren't sure about Kona's health. Kona got, what, a clean bill of health about a week ago, so he hung home with the doggies and detailed your car. You were busy with without me and the kids, weren't ya? Um, but my, me and the kids flew up to Cleveland, Ohio to celebrate my Uncle Bob's 80th birthday party. I'll share a little bit with you and then we'll jump into show and tell and such. Um, he had a Willie Nelson's Roadhouse themed birthday party. It was hilarious. He had, well, a lot of people had red bandanas with yarn braid pigtails. My uncle actually looked a lot like Willie Nelson with his on. There was lots of fun treats and things. I contributed a couple of the gift tags. And um, let's see, my kids had great cousin time with my brother and Anne's kids, real close in age. But we were up way past our bedtime every night, so we're still trying to catch up on sleep as usual. So we had a really good time. I hadn't been back to Cleveland, which is where I'm originally from to see family since before COVID. Kids hadn't been back in like three years, so we had a really good time. A little bit of an eventful um, trek out. We left with plenty of time to get to the Atlanta airport, the busiest airport in the world, and there was an incident at the airport wreaking all kinds of havoc. I guess there was a jumper. <laughs> He's fine. He did get arrested. This is nobody that I know, but this caused all kinds of crazy traffic. So it took us a while to get to our gate, but luckily our flight was delayed and all was good. We rolled in the door about 11.30 p.m. Sunday night, and as I mentioned, we're still catching up on sleep. But a good time was had by all, so thank you. Tonight we're going to be doing projects from the Splendid Day Suite. Brian, are you ready for your cameo? Say hello to my husband, Brian. He is watching for your questions. If you have a question tonight, put a Q colon in front of it. We're gonna do Q&A at the end. Ask any questions you have. I will stay on until I answer all your questions, but that'll help me focus on tonight's projects. We'll get through the projects and then at the end we will do a Q&A. So don't feel like I'm not paying attention to your questions. We will get through them all at the end. Just make sure you put a Q. If you forget the Q, Brian's keeping his eye on them. He'll try to get those queued up for me. How many times did I say Q? <laughs> so I've got, let's see, what else do I have for you? When you shop with me, you can earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more. Make sure you use the host code on orders under $150. And the easiest way to do that is to use my shopping link, the paperpixie.com slash shop. The ho my current host code will auto magically apply for you to that order. Now, if your order is $150 or more, don't use the host code. You'll earn Stampin' Rewards from Stampin' Up, and you'll also earn Pixie Perks. No worries about that. So again, the paperpixie.com slash shop. We are in the midst of celebration now through August 31st, so orders of $50 or more will earn free products from the celebration brochure. 
So you want to check those out here. You can see that on my website at thepaperpixie.com slash catalogs. There are freebies for free with $50 purchase and freebies for free with $100 purchase. Again, this goes through August 31st, but it's while supplies last, which means we do have a product that has sold out. That is the soft sea foam and pool party cards and envelopes. They're gone for good. So if you've got something you're wanting to earn for free, get it sooner than later because all items are while supplies last all right so all you guys are all talking about how hot it is yes 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 humidity and hot and i get it <laughs> so all right show and tell and of course i did not watch me you guys get to see me do this live i didn't do my checklist let me set the white balance you can watch the magic happen here um <laughs> Always try to set the white balance so that you guys see the most accurate colors. And then I also am going to zoom in. There we go. White balance. Let's do this. Magic, magic. All right, here we go. <laughs> show and tell. The kids picked out show and tell to show you tonight. Um, our son, Nolan, is six and he drew uh -oh, a dino unicorn kitty is what this is. So dino, dino unicorn kitty, that's what he said. I see the unicorn horn. I see the scales of a dinosaur. So that's what he created, a four-legged dino unicorn kitty. And then Lily had some fun this week as well. They're in summer camp and they get some creative time. And I'm going to try to read this. She purposefully misspelled some things because she wanted to be cute. Dear you, come to Dino Crossing. It is very fun. There is pizza. Yum. Love something. <laughs> so that's kind of fun and cute. Lily is nine. We've got a fourth grader and a first grader and they start school in less than three weeks, which is insane. Summer is almost over. We had a 10 week summer. We've got what, two and a half weeks left anyways. All right, let's go ahead and jump into tonight's projects. I've got a card for you and a gift box. The gift box is, or I should say a treat box. It's a remix. I love to do remix. All right. So let me show you. We are doing easy tonight because I'm still catching up on sleep. This is a quick and easy three panel card. I love this layout, especially with beautiful designer series papers like the Splendid Day. Um, I love, I will, I don't have the swatch books yet from Brian. They're taking a little detour up to Michigan before it come, they come back down to me, but I will have swatch, bo swatch books soon. But here is the three panel card. We'll do this guy first, Splendid Day Suite. And you guys may have seen this. This is an exploding treat holder. It is so quick and easy to make. And all you need is a six by six piece of paper. So I know Norlene, you're on here. You're always asking me to come up with six by six projects, which are perfect for my paper shares because our paper uh, in the paper share is six by six. This treat holder will fit um, the like little mini peppermint patties. It will also fit Ghirardelli squares. I have none of those in my candy stash because I probably ate them all. <laughs> so, ooh, the heat index. I'm seeing numbers. Crazy, crazy. So, a tea bag. A tea bag. Hmm. Maybe. Probably one of not one of the fancy like British tea bags because those are usually a little bit bigger. But I think probably one of the U.S. ones. <laughs> So, um, but this is quick and easy and you might not recognize the sentiment. Let me show you where this is in the catalog. So we're looking at the Splendid Day product suite. If you're interested and you fall in love with these, pro these products tonight, in the description, there is a link to purchase the products. So we've got the Splendid Day suite on page 64 of the mini catalog. That's the July to December mini catalog. Great all year round suite. I love when they put these in our um, sort of holiday mini. The paper is absolutely stunning. It has, um, it's a specialty paper. It has um, petal pink, soft seafoam, pool party, fresh freesia, Sahara sand, copper. There's a fresh freesia foil, a calypso coral foil, a soft seafoam foil. It's gorgeous. And in the suite, you get the bundle the open leaf trinkets, the soft sea foam seam binding ribbon, and the specialty designer series paper. I am going into the annual catalog 
to grab the uh, embellishment that I use are the 2021 to 2023 in color opal rounds. You'll find those on page 142. And that is what, I just flipped that card over, but I just thought, I love that color. That's in fresh freesia, love the opal rounds. And I just thought that was a really nice, quick and easy pairing there. I can't get enough of the shine on that fresh freesia foil. So beautiful. All right. Let's go ahead, we'll jump into the card first, then we'll do the 3D project. I love that project. I actually created it, I don't know, I did it in 2018 and 2019, so I already have a video tutorial for that. I'm way behind on videos, so I thought I would take it easy and do a throwback project so I don't have to create another tutorial. Keep putting me behind here, so. So what happens, I was totally off grid for the four day weekend when we went to Ohio and it was totally worth it, so. All right. We are gonna be using Fresh Freesia cardstock for the base. I think, you guys, that this is my favorite purple now. It was Highland Heather, but I am falling in love with Fresh Freesia and I just keep gravitating towards it, so that tells me it's one of my favorites. Um, so we've got a piece that measures four and a quarter by 11, and I'm gonna, it's already scored in half at the five and a half inch mark. So I'm gonna take that valley score line and turn it into a mountain fold, and then we'll burnish. I've got a piece of basic white, and this measures four inches by five and a quarter, and we're just gonna go ahead and glue that on the inside here. I didn't write any measurements down tonight, so we'll see how we do. It's all in my head. Um, let's see. The kids had a pool day with their cousins while we were up in Ohio. Nolan had a little incident with a pool toy. <laughs> so the tooth fairy needed to come visit him because of it. <laughs> so, oh, but he's good. He split his lip and helped get one of his loose teeth out. So there we go. All right, so that's for the inside. Now I've got a piece of pool party. The pool party measures three and three quarters by five. We're gonna glue that one down here. And then I started with a panel of the um, Splendid Day. Is that what it's called? I always forget. Yeah, the Splendid Day specialty paper. And I started with a piece that measures three and a half by four and a half, okay? So you can mix and match designer series papers. One of the things I love about a three panel card is that you can focus on different patterns, designs, etc. It can also go vertical. Nope, that would be horizontal. It can also go horizontal. Vertical, horizontal, love this. And because you have the three panels, there's no 16th inch measurements. When I did the four panel card a couple weeks ago, we needed to dip into the 16th inch measurements. Um, so I've got three and a half by four and a half. And we're gonna just cut into three strips of one and a half inches wide. So along the long side or the four and a half inch side, we're gonna do three pieces at one and a half, okay? And what's great about this pattern is we could do all three panels on the front like so, but I kind of liked flipping one of them just to give a little bit of a difference there. Um, I'm trying to think, let's see. I mean, I cut just a few from that paper just to give you a sense. This is the Sahara Sand foil one. These are the three we're gonna use on tonight's car, but I just wanted to show you sort of the different combinations. This is the Calypso Coral foil and got a great pattern on the back side. I love this paper. So don't think you can only use the Fresh Freesia sheet for this project. Use any of them. This is the Sahara Sand and love the different textures here. And the other cool thing is you can mix and match with all three of these as well. That's a fun pattern. I've got some dots from some of my projects for my uncle's party. <laughs> um, lots of different things that we can do here. Flipping some over, mix and match, just do some really cool things with our panels. So that's a fun one with any of our pattern papers, especially double-sided, just mix and match and have a good time with it, okay? Alrighty, ooh, I see some great questions. I love it, I love, I shouldn't peek, but I get excited about your questions because you always ask great questions. All right, 
And if you're new here, just put a Q colon in front of your question. I will answer questions at the end of the live stream tonight. So with these three panels, again, now these measure one and a half by three and a half. All three are the same size. We're gonna go ahead and just glue these down. And you're gonna want an eighth of an inch of the pool party bordering each piece, okay? Take your time with this one because we are putting the liquid glue on the foil side. So it's gonna slip and slide around a little bit for you. But again, liquid glue, I love for stuff like this because you can get things lined up right where you need it. Gives you a little bit of extra wiggle room. Here we go. All right. And then this panel, we're just gonna glue to the front of our Fresh Freesia piece. Again, this is so quick and easy. And so many different things. Just grab what you have in your stash circle punches, um, label punches. You can make some quick cards ready to go for any occasion with what you have in your stash. Also a great way to use up your patterned paper for sure. Yay, glue girls unite, Jeanette. <laughs> All right, so there is the basics of that. Again, it would look beautiful sideways as well if you had your fold on the top, okay? Now let's do a little bit of stamping. I love the sentiment in the sweet sending hugs, okay? So we're gonna actually use Blackberry Bliss. I wanted a color that was a little bit darker that looked nice with the Fresh Freesia, so I opted for Blackberry Bliss. This is what the dyes look like, or the ones that we're not using. Great dyes, I love these intricate pieces. They really add some oomph to your projects. stamping the inside of my catalog by accident. Put the catalog on top of my inky stamp set. All right, so sending hugs. I just got a scrap piece of basic white here, just the regular weight. We'll come back and stamp a little bit more in a bit. And I love this little half moon shape that's in the Splendid Stems dies. I'm gonna grab some post-it tape. This is linked on my favorites page. If you're looking for post-it tape, it comes like so, and I just use it to hold my dies in place so they don't shift around on me. Now you'll see that this looks like a pretty tight fit. As long as you get the H to the top of the die and the bottom of the G to the bottom of the die, you should be in good shape. Trying to sort of make the bottom edge parallel with the word sending. That's kind of how I center that. I do like to put two pieces of post-it tape that anchors that a little bit more as it goes through the machine. Oh, and those of you that watched on my live stream two weeks ago, when my <laughs> stamp and cut and emboss machine made an awful Halloween type noise, I was demonstrating a Halloween projects. Um, Brian sent me a picture while I was in Ohio and he goes, this could be the problem and all four screws on the bottom were loose. So they're tightened. I think we're in good shape. <laughs> if, it's, if it makes noise again, then it wasn't the loose screws. So, all right, so using the die cutting machine here, I've got plate, let me tell you what my sandwich is, not to make you all hungry, but one and two, then cutting plate three, then what we want to cut and another cutting plate three and run it through. Cross your fingers, I don't make the noise, yay! All right, we're gonna die cut a few more things as well. I'm sure I could be a little bit more efficient. I'm, t I'm being gentle pulling off the post-it tape because I don't wanna tear the cardstock. Sometimes it can get extra sticky, especially if it's new. 
but I love the detail on this die. You've got some embossing and then some dotted almost stitching marks. Really, really pretty. Love the detail on that. All right, so we're gonna cut two pieces using the intricate, or I should say the, the leaf dies from the Splendid Stems. And I'm going to use soft sea foam and Sahara sand. Okay. You can mix and match. I love looking at the designer series paper to get coordinating colors for that. Those don't need to be taped down because I don't need to make sure they stay put. We'll run this through. It's so funny. I'm so gun shy to use the machine to hear that noise again. So far, so good. It's a little noisy, but not creaky. And then we're gonna pop out those dies. Get this out of the way. And grab your take your pick tool. I think my other one got borrowed by my daughter because Paper Pumpkin arrived while we were in Ohio. Ooh. Whoops, ejection holes. Work with me here. There we go. I love the detailed cutout for that. And there's the soft sea foam. Love those too. I'm gonna show you a little trick here. Just grab a lint brush and you can pick up all those pieces in one fell swoop. Quick, quick, quick. <laughs> all right, so bring those back. I'm just gonna take a little bit of liquid glue, start with the bigger soft sea foam piece and just a little bit on the stem here. You could use our adhesive sheets, but I do like having the leaves kind of being a little bit loose. So we'll just do about there. It's okay if you get a little bit of a mess of the glue, the uh, sentiment piece is gonna cover whatever mess you make. So again, just a little bit of glue on the stem there. And I'll kind of just stagger those two like that. You could use mini glue dots as well. And then I'm just gonna grab a pair of our amazing dimensionals. And I'm just gonna do two, sort of trying to avoid the stems so we can get dimensionals on either side of the stems. And then we're just gonna center that, making sure the bottom is parallel with the layers, like so. And then let's grab a fresh freesia opal round. These are just so pretty. You can tell I like the fresh freesia the most. Pop that right here. So quick and easy three panel card. Clean up my mess a little bit here. But love the way that looks with that beautiful fresh freesia foil. Isn't that great? All right, so that's the card. Let's jump into the quick and easy treat holder. I've got an updated template because the last time I did, I actually meant to show you one more template. This isn't so much a template, but just to kind of show you what the three panel card looks like without um, patterns to it. But again, you can have that go either horizontal or vertical. Okay, so I'll make sure that that's included in the blog post with the card, which will likely be next week. But we're gonna start with the same color foil from the Splendid Day Specialty Designer Series paper, and this just measures six by six, okay? I'm gonna bring in the Simply Scored. It is my scoring tool of choice um, because I feel like I'm a little bit more accurate, but the paper trimmer works as well. And I'm just gonna start with one. This isn't really directional. If your paper was directional, you'd want to start the first two score lines that I'm gonna talk through with the paper going top to bottom, okay? Or the pattern going top to bottom, I should say. So we're just gonna score this at two inches and four inches, okay? I'm gonna rotate it clockwise and we're gonna do two, 
two and a half, four and a half, and five. Okay, so let me repeat. If you had a directional pattern top to bottom, you do two and four, rotate it clockwise, two, two and a half, four and a half, five. Okay? I'm gonna bring in the template here, okay? My other one, if you've been following me for a, for a few years, you know that my templates used to be hand-drawn before I figured out how to do them digitally. So this project is old enough to have hand-drawn templates. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fold and burnish. Now this is actually a no-glue explosion treat holder, which I love. Yours, there's a number of different ways that you can close this one, and I'll talk through each of them for you. You got options. So again, just fold and burnish on all your score lines. Okay, now I'm gonna come in and we're gonna cut away these top two corners. You wanna go to the top two corners. This is one inch in height. It's the one that's closest. So if I hold it here, this is a full two inch section along the bottom. You wanna go up here to the top, okay? So grab my paper snips. I'm gonna turn it this way, show you what that looks like upside down. I'm gonna come in one score line and I'm gonna cut up two score lines. Now for this, I want to cut just to the left of the score line itself because I do wanna make sure that that's gonna fit. Now we may need to cut a little sliver away as well, but just cut away that score line there. Turn it a quarter of a turn. And this one you can just cut right on the score line. We're gonna remove that corner, okay? Now, if, if you're someone that saves pieces that are this size, you could wait to do that last score line until you've cut away those pieces and then you'll have a little bit of, I think it's an inch and a half, inch and a half by two, okay? Just a little tip there. I don't typically save pieces that are that big or that small, I should say. All right, so on the other side, again, we're removing the score line there, cutting just to the right of it. And then coming in here, removing those two sections in the corner. You see something out there? Maybe an owl. Oh, Wendy. We've got barred owls hanging out in the yard lately. All right, so we're removing those two pieces, okay? Now what we wanna do is come in and do these diagonal score lines. Now you could do this old school way where you take a ruler and a stylus and score but I'm gonna show you, you can also do this, and I think this is how I show you in the video. You can just hand do those diagonal score lines. So I've got it in this orientation with our flap at the top. I'm gonna to fold in on the first score line from the right. Pretty easy to see here on the foil. So this score line, the one at the bottom, we wanna line up that score line with this folded edge. And what that's gonna do is create that perfect diagonal score line. I do like to take either the tip of my bone folder or even a fingernail and put it right there at the intersection of the score line where it, heats, where it meets the folded edge. And then we're gonna line up again the, that score line to the folded edge. Now let me do this real quick and then I'll bring it up to the camera and show you closer. And then I can come in here and burnish on that diagonal. So here's what we've done this score line here, we have folded it to meet with that folded edge, okay? And what that does on the inside, you see that diagonal score line? Now when I open this, we've just done this score line here, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Again, either using your fingernail, it's funny when I'm doing it on the left because I'm right-handed, I don't grab the <laughs> bone folder for that, but the fingernail works. Get that lined up again. Again, that score line lining up with the folded edge to create our diagonal fold here, like so. Now, just turn it 180 and we're gonna keep repeating the same thing. Now this time, it's the horizontal score line closest to this edge, okay? Same thing got quite a few treat holders on my website that um, follow the same technique. It saves you a lot of time, especially when you're mass producing. I think I made, I don't know, 100 or so of these for a Stampin' Up! demonstrator event. I love giving out treats. 
to my fellow demonstrators just because. All right, so we've done all four of those. I just repeated the same thing, okay? Now ultimately what's gonna happen is these are all gonna fold in. You're gonna have room right there in the middle for your treat. And this is gonna end up folding down, okay? So we're gonna do one quick thing because on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and tuck the flap in, but I am gonna talk through two other ways or three other ways really that you can close this treat holder. Because I'm tucking it in, I'm actually gonna put a little finger notch here. And I just have a retired half inch circle punch. So just use any circle punch you have, but we're gonna come in about, I don't know, a third of the way. I've got that notified here on this, on the template if you're gonna do this. And that just makes sure that the recipient can get their thumbnail in there and open this treat holder up, okay? The other thing I'm gonna do, I'm bringing back another retired punch, but grab a corner rounder punch. I'm gonna come in and round the corners of that top flap. And we're gonna see if this will close without needing any surgery, but usually I have to cut off a little bit of a sliver to get that to tuck in. Okay, so ultimately this looks like our template now. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of fold in these diagonal score lines. And you'll see your treat will fit right in that little pocket. Now, three, what did I say? Three or four different ways. One way is you can close this with a magnet, okay? Another way is you could just tie a ribbon around it. You could also close it with a piece of Velcro, or you can do what I'm gonna do, and I'm actually gonna tuck this. So we've got the outside edge, and then the next piece, this is gonna tuck into that. Sometimes you gotta kinda, cur kinda curl the paper in there, and I think I do need to perform a little bit of surgery, so it's just a little bit too snug. Because this is about an inch to tuck in, I can come in with my paper snips, and I'm just gonna cut just a little miter cut from the rounded edge. I don't know if you can see that sliver but just tiny, a little tiny angle cut there, okay? And I just kind of flip it over. Because I'm right-handed, it's just easier for me to see from this side. Again, I don't know, it's about a 16th of an inch angle cut to that score line. You'll see it's just slightly angled here, okay? And then, again, I don't have treats because I ate them all. <laughs> We're just gonna go ahead and kind of make a little pocket there and tuck this in. And then it's gonna hold itself closed with no adhesive. How cute is that? Now, this is adorable in and of itself because that paper is stunning and to die for, but I thought we could dress it up just a little bit. I love studying sentiments in stamp sets. And this one, I love the sentiments, but I also wanted to do something a little bit different. So I love the sentiment, much love, but it's included with In Your New Life Together. Great uh, wedding sentiment there. So there's two things you could do with that stamp set. Because I resell my stamps once they retire, I try not to cut into them. But if you buy this to own it, and you're gonna, it's gonna be part of your perma stash, you can absolutely separate these two stamps to make it last longer, just do a straight cut. Then that way you can either stamp either sentiment separately or you can put them back together on a clear block or on your stamparatus. But the other thing you can do is just take a little bit of post-it tape or a post-it note or scotch tape that's long enough to cover that sentiment that you don't want to use. Just gonna mask it. You could use the masking paper as well if you even, I haven't even ordered it yet, but we do have masking paper. You could use that too. And grabbing my scrap piece of white and my Blackberry Bliss. We're gonna go ahead and just ink up Much Love. Now, if you've been, not been brave enough to try this, my best tip is remember to remove the post-it tape before you stamp, okay? We got it, and that's going straight into the trash because I don't want ink to get anywhere. There we go. We'll go ahead and stamp that on here. And then much love will perfectly fit in our little half circle. Love that, isn't that great? That's kind of a fun little sentiment to put on a treat holder. 
Now, where did I put that die? Here it is. Remind me to tell a story about the die that you lost so I remember to show them. Um. <laughs> All right, so grabbing my post-it tape. This is what we used before. Again, trying to level or parallel the sentiment with the bottom of the die before I hold that into place. Clear, almost lost. Almost <laughs> lost. Yeah, I'll tell the story. <laughs> and we're going to do pool party with one of the dies we used for the cards. We're going to die cut these two things. Let's do those together. As I, I'm, I work in such a small space. It's funny. Only when I'm live. I take up the whole room when I'm not live. <laughs> All right. Okay, so one, two, and three with your plates. These guys should both fit. There we go. No noise. Ooh. At least it's not that freaking Halloween door noise. That's the plates. That's yeah, not the, the plates. Machine never get used to that after being a demonstrator for a dozen years still the creaky plates <laughs> all right let's dissect our pieces and parts here I see that last question <laughs> I just love pool party paired with fresh freesia. So we got the front there with the finger notch. Let's focus. There we go. And then again, liquid glue. Just a little bit on the stem here. I'm going to try to avoid that little finger notch. Okay. So I do want that to stick up just a little bit at the top but trying to keep that finger notch um, not covered up or trying to keep it from being covered up. And same thing, just a pair of dimensionals. I got glue on me. Now this will hang over the sides just a little bit, but I love it. There's that. And then The finishing touch, another fresh freesia opal round. Oops, there we go. Love how that looks with the, that opal round that's got the little bit of iridescence in it. So, so cute. So here are tonight's projects. Is this the card that I made? Or is it this one? This one. <laughs> We've got tonight's projects featuring the Splendid Day Suite. This is a triple panel card, quick and easy to create a remix or a throwback. This was a um, no glue explosion treat holder, all using products from the Splendid Day Suite. So if you fell in love with these products, there is a link in the description to purchase either the suite or the bundle or the designer series paper or the opal rounds, sort of the highlights of the projects I used tonight. See that in the description, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. And now we are going to jump into tonight's Q&A. So let me go ahead and get that teed up here. Let's see if I can do that. Oops, hold on. I moved my um, chat to a different window here. All right, let's do Q. Oh, I'm not looking at the, there we go. Okay, let me switch to the next screen here and we will take care of Q&A here. Let's see if this works. Oh, we're a little bit off center, but I'm just gonna go with it. Okay, um, apologies for that. We'll fix that for next week, but I'm trying my um, questions in a different spot. So hello, Amelia Millie, testing you, Brian. Love it, Heather Daniels testing you. 
how do I know when my paper pumpkin has been processed? So Nancy Lee, you should receive an email from Stampin' Up that, well, let me ask you a clarifying question. You might need to either shoot me an email, Nancy Lee's on my team. When your paper pumpkin is processed each month, you get an email receipt that it's been, that the, uh, it's been charged. Even if you've got a prepaid, it'll just have a $0 amount. But if you're talking about when you order um, like a prepaid ahead of time, you should receive an email with the, I'm gonna answer both ways, Nancy Lee. So you should, e you should receive an email with the prepaid code that you then have to go apply to your account. So I'm not sure which one you're referring to, but um, monthly subscribers, you get an email each time they process paper pumpkin for the month. If you've purchased a prepaid, you do need to look for that prepaid code in your email, and then you can apply it to your Paper Pumpkin account at paperpumpkin.com, okay? Clever and quick, my favorite projects. Let's see, oh, thank you, Super Sanders 58 for helping out. Yes, Pool Party is the blue that I used. Let's see, um, I, I personally do not ship to England, but we do have Stampin' Up! in England. So there are, I can give you some recommendations of demonstrators in the UK. Jeanette, if you wanna shoot me an email, julie at thepaperpixie.com, happy to help you out there, okay? Both working surfaces are standing height, Jeanette. The surface that I'm standing at here, which is an island, is 36 inch height. That's the standard uh, bar height, I think. Um, when I originally had this room designed, it was also 36 inches behind me, but I found that, or it was a little bit lower than that, wasn't it? Anyways, I worked at it for a little bit and then I was like, oh no, this is not going to work. So they helped kind of reconfigure the space behind me. The space behind me is about 38 inches where you see the punches and the markers and things behind me, the ink pads. So 36 for the island. 38 behind me because I'm five foot six so the 38 I like a little bit better Brian actually likes to stand back there as well but he's six foot four so he's like almost a foot taller than me um, anyways great question how do you store your clear stamps in between both pieces of plastic or on the one so uh, Amy it's funny I actually if I'm if I've used the stamp set and most of the stamps I actually stick those directly to the clear case the photopolymer um, I think those are the ones you're asking about. Yeah, in between both pieces of plastic. But if I'm like really quickly ripping into a stamp set to use it for a project like it's brand new, I'll just pull the one piece of plastic off, the flimsy one, and throw it in the trash. And then ultimately I will move those either to stay on the clear sheet or I will, um, the, the heavier clear sheet, or I'll stick them to the photopolymer case. Um, they're intended to stick to the case. That's why they're now printing the stamp images on the insert of the case. I use glue along the edges like you, but once it left a ridge visible from the front. Um, great question, I think that's Kathy. Um, it, I try to burnish the glue to try to smooth some of that out. It does happen sometimes where you get a little bit of, um, you see a little bit of the glue line underneath, but try to burnish, not a lot, because then you'll see that you tried to burnish, um, but try to burnish a little bit to smooth that glue out and that should help you out. Hello, Melly. I had a friend give me a bunch of old dies that say Sizzix Big Shot for Stampin' Up. Can I use them with my my mini boss? Yes, you can. You sure can. Um, it should be the same kind of sandwich, but yes, a lot of our dies as we transitioned to from Sizzix to a different manufacturer, they all work the same. When is the best time to use tape instead of glue? Ooh, Kathy, great question. Ah. <sighs> As you know, if you've watched me for a while, I love to use glue all the time. Usually with tear and tape, I'll use it when it's something super quick um, and I don't need any wiggle room, meaning um, I'm just going to fold and like if I'm using folds um, to line up edges and I don't need to make sure everything is lined up just right, tear and tape works great for that. It makes it really quick and easy. Things are falling out of my little thing here. Um, but great question. It's usually if I don't have, to, if I don't need wiggle room, I'll use tear and tape. How do you keep your cutting plates from bowing? Lori, the best way to do that is to flip. Flip as often as you can. As soon as you start to see it bow, flip top to bottom, um, flip them upside down in any direction. How quickly do you, Brian does most of my die cutting these days. You flip them every two or three times or so. He's checking for you. Yeah, I don't so know the, how. The top is usually like straight. 
and this one bows on the bottom. So when the bowing starts happening, I flip them. Flip them like top to bottom? But it's always like this. Got it. You never do it where it's going the other way. So as soon as one starts to bow, I don't know how you keep them so flat. Brian's a pro. See, the problem is he does so well, I just keep asking him to die cut for me. But yeah, so you flip it when one of them starts to so bow. So the bottom should be flat. So the, the top bottom should be flat. flat. So when the bottom starts bowing, you flip it. Got it. <laughs> Hopefully you understood that. But as soon as it starts to bow, flip them from top to bottom. Always try to keep the bottom one flat. Okay? Thank you. What should I clean my my plates with to get rid of sticky left from post to tape? Um, I would actually use um, either alcohol wipes or hand sanitizer to get the stickiness off. That's what I would use. Your post-it tape cue, is that on a roll dispenser? Yes, it is on a roll dispenser. That's what mine looks like. I don't know how far, how much I have left. There's, I've, this is the only one I've ever purchased, so it's lasting me a really long time. I do try to reuse the post-it tape until it stops being sticky or starts to tear. Do you turn your plates over each time you cut to keep the plates from warping? Not each time. I don't know. You probably do it every three or four times maybe. Maybe not even that often. Probably 20. Every 20 times. It all kind of depends. It all depends on the pressure of your machine as well because each machine has a little bit different pressure in the rolls. No two machines are alike as far as the pressure. So it's more just keeping an eye. You know, one of the things you can do is put your clear plate on a flat surface. I'm going to try to demonstrate this. And if you have a little bit of give, this isn't a good example because my hand is not a flat surface. But if you put it on a flat surface and you have a little bit of give, then I would recommend either flipping or swapping with the bottom plate just to try to keep them flat. Okay. Tell us again what the die set is called. It is the Splendid Stems Dies. Splendid stems dies. You get nine of them. Love the dies. But I always recommend if you're going to get the dies, get the stamp set as well. You get them together uh, discounted as a bundle, 10% off. Let's see. Do you think the Stampin' Up! Specialty plate for 3D embossing would fit in a big shot? It should, Janelle. Um, because I think what we used to have was the blue plate. It should fit. Um, I'm sure there's folks in the comments that have tried it. I, I don't use my old Big Shots anymore, but it should still work. My wood grain surface is a desk mat. Yes, Jeanette, I've got it linked on my favorites page. Pop that up really quickly, the paperpixie.com slash favorites. It is listed on there. Now the challenge is um, it's been so popular. There's a bunch of different, I've had a couple of different patterns. This is my favorite one so far. It's a neoprene desk mat, so it's great for stamping on. And I love it. I'm going to need to get a new one soon because this one's getting really um, messy, dirty, I should say. But it doesn't always ship prime. You just got to keep your eye on it. It's around $30 or so, but it's one of my favorite things in my craft room, that desk mat, um, because not only is it great for videos for me, but it's also a great stamping surface. It's not very thick, but it still works really well with photopolymer. Thinking of blenders, Stampin' Right markers, and Stampin' Up colored pencils, when should I use Stazon versus Memento? Okay, so the Stampin' Blends, you should use Memento. You basically want to mix alcohol with water-based. So if you're using alcohol markers, you want to use a water-based ink. So that'll be Memento. For Stampin' Right markers and Stampin' Up colored pencils, um, I would use Stazon because with the, with the colored pencils, you'll likely use water to blend the colored pencils. You'll want to use Stazon for that. So Stazon is a solvent ink, and then you'll use that for water coloring, um, basically any type of water coloring. So you basically do the opposite, right? Stazon if you're going to use water. Memento if you're going to use alcohol. Hopefully that, that makes sense. You're going to do an episode with the Scotty dog. Probably, Emma, because I have that in my stash and I think it's adorable. So yes, that will likely be an episode coming soon. What do I use for my templates? I use Adobe Illustrator. So I went a bit crazy after joining your team, ordered many sets of stamps and dies, but not sure how to stick them. Oh, the stamps. Okay, so Yvette. We've got two different kinds of stamps. We have the red rubber, which are referred to as cling stamps. 
And then we have the photopolymer, which are the clear see-through. The clear see-through ones and the cling, you can stick them to, I've got a stamp on here, but clear blocks. So we do have a, um, a clear block caddy and clear blocks that you can get at a bundled discount. And so here's an example of what our red rubber looks like. This, with the sticker or without, will stick to a clear block. So that's sticking to that. So that'll stick. You'll want to do clear blocks and or the stamp apparatus, which is our stamp positioning tool. I'm looking for mine. I'm in the midst of working on a project with the typewriter. Um, but this is our stamp positioning tool, same kind of thing. The stamps stick to the clear plates on that. So you'll definitely want to add that to your stash. Um, for the dies, those will work in the stamp and cut and emboss machine. And I would use something like post-it tape or post-it notes to hold those in place, especially when you're cutting out stamped images. How do you decide which stamp sets you will keep? Rosina, I got a real easy answer for that. If it's not current, I don't keep it. <laughs> so um, I, do not, um, I do not keep any retired stamp sets. They all get included in my retired stamp sale, which I know there's gonna be a question coming up, mostly, most likely in August or September. We needed to move out of July because of travel and schedule and everything. But yeah, I, the only stamp sets that I've ever hung on to are like the team um, demonstrator type stamps, but as far as other than that, they all get sold. Newbie here, welcome Pam. Love your projects and I've gone back and watched them all. Love your directions and templates, made the easiest ones, awesome. Do you flip cutting, cutting plates often or just always use the same for top and bottom? So I think we've answered that. Hopefully you've heard the discussion around that, but yes, we do flip them every 10 to 15 to 20 times. It just all depends if one, if the top plate starts to curve, we flip it to the bottom so that we can get it flattened out again. Okay. <laughs> I saw this one as you answered it, Snowy Mom. When is your tour of your craft room going to be? By the end of the year? Think we can do that? <laughs> um, we, I don't even... What you see behind the camera is the cleanest part of my entire room. It's not always clean, um, but I have an island. There's just stuff everywhere because I have basically gone from working full time to full time demonstrator with really no vacation. Even though I do take time off from live streaming, I'm still working. So um, I just have not had time to sit down and tidy up and get things ready for um, my retired item sale. But yes. I absolutely plan to do a tour of my craft room, but it's gotta get camera ready. <laughs> so let's aim for by the end of the year, how's that? You mentioned a product share, can you briefly describe what that is please? Absolutely, Jennifer. So a product share is essentially where you get a little sampling of the papers and the ribbons in an, a new catalog. So the way that I do my product shares is each time a new catalog launches, Usually the you know two or three weeks before the catalog launch date, I will um, send out information about my product shares and it essentially is you get a quarter roll of each of the new ribbons and a quarter pack of each of the new papers. That's the easiest way to describe it. So basically I group together, let's say four people sign up. Each of those four people will get a quarter of paper and a quarter of ribbon or whether they just sign up for paper or just sign up for ribbon. Basically, I usually have paper or ribbon or both. If you pick both, that usually comes with a free gift. But then what Brian and I do is then order the full packs of everything and then we divide it up. So my paper share is a six by six paper share. And then my ribbon is each a quarter roll of ribbon. Usually our ribbon rolls, it varies, but most of them are 10 yards each. So you'd get two and a half yards of that ribbon in the product share. Now I only do them, I only offer them once per catalog. So I've already done signed, sealed and delivered the product shares for the July to December mini catalog. My next one will be for the January to June 2023 mini catalog. We will announce that in December. Okay, so that's the scoop on that. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Um, I do not have any videos on how I do my patterns, but thank you for asking. Um, it's just not something that my um, 
really that my customers and my audience, I just don't have, um, there's no need for me to share that video. I know it would help others, but it's just not something that I intend to do. So thanks for asking though. Um, but shoot me an email. I can show you where I kind of learned. I sort of taught myself illustrator started with, um, some videos on YouTube and then just kind of went from there. Do you type out your labels or is there a way to download the details from the Stampin' Up! website if you're a demo? I type them out. So um, there is no way to download that from the Stampin' Up! website. You're probably asking about these. I do have on my top 10 organization ideas video. Carla, feel free to shoot me an email. I'll send you a link to that. I do walk through... Um, the label maker I used. Did I show the program? I think I might have. I used Brother P Touch Editor and I just type it right in there on my computer and then I send it to my brother label printer. I love these. They're 0.94 inches. I can get three or four rows of data on there. I add the border to it. It's just all part of a label design program that's offered by Brother. It's a free program. Um, but, you know, everybody wants different information on them. I used to include price. I used to include the page number. I used to include the catalog. And then prices changed and products carried over to catalogs. And then that got too complicated. So I just include the name, the item number, the number of dies. So I know I'm not missing any. And then which stamp set it may coordinate with. So great questions tonight. All right. Any other questions that I missed? Oh, thank you. I'm like, I thought you were pointing at the thing. So I'm going to come back to this really quickly. I had a funny story. So this is on my favorites page. You may have seen this before. It is a telescoping, did I go the right way? Yeah, handle magnet. Okay. So Brian was helping me die cut a whole bunch of pieces using the splendid stems dies. And one of the dies went rogue. And all he did, I handed him this and he stuck it in the trash can and it was like, click. It was like right away, let me see if I can pick one up. Hold on. <laughs> it was just like that. Came right out of the, um, look at that. Came right out of the trash can. So one of my team members lost a die. I suggested she get one of these. And if you're like me and it's hard to bend over, you can't touch your toes like me, and I drop one of those dies on the ground and with my nails I can't pick it up, I pick it up with this handy tool. So you'll find that on my favorites page. But just wanted to share a real life situation of why this little tool is super handy. I also have the magnetic bowl as well. That's listed on my favorites page too. And it's so funny, I wasn't using that for tonight's dies and I was like, where are my dies that I should have? You can just pop them right in there and they are magnetic. This is for like bolts and screws and stuff, but we are handy folks as crafters, aren't we? So love that, awesome. Let's see, oh, great suggestion, Linda. I don't know. Let me see if I can come back to that. Oh, you can't see. I'm going to fix. I will fix how this is um, showing to you. But she says, check the back of your iPad for missing dies. iPad and the back of your stamp apparatus because of those magnets. I have found dies there as well. So thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. Again, if you're interested in purchasing the products I demonstrated today, you'll find that link in the description. As always, reach out to me if you have any questions. Julie at thepaperpixie.com. Stop by at thepaperpixie.com to check out projects to inspire you. And if you found an, if you learned any tips or tricks or enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like, follow, and subscribe. I will be live again next week for episode 249 next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week. Take good care, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.